postman horror here. I want to be a vampire. There was a teenage boy named Luakan who said he wanted to be a vampire. Everyone thought he was just looking for attention. He didn't have any friends. All the kids in school were afraid of him. He was odd looking and his head seemed too large for his body. He was unnaturally thin and his eyes were sunken, had dark circles around them. His cheeks were hollow, his skin was deftly shade of pale. He dressed in black from head to toe. He wore a long black trench coat that resembled a cape. When the other kids were playing sports, Lurican would be sitting in the corner of the schoolyard, engrossed in one of his books. He collected books about vampires, devil worship, and satanic rituals. He read each one over and over, feverishly underlining passages and taking notes. There was always strange rumours about him floating around the neighbourhood, some younger children claimed he had seen him murder a dog and drink its blood. Others said he had kidnapped cats in the neighborhood and bring them home so that he could perform weird experiments on them. His parents were worried sick about him. His odd behavior unnerved them. They didn't know what to do with him. They brought him in to doctors and psychiatrists, but none of it did any good. One day his mother found some of his books when she realized they were about Satanism. She was horrified and threw them in the garbage. Lokan didn't complain or protest, and when his parents went to bed, he crept downstairs, went outside to retrieve his beloved books from the trash. The next day he made a big hole in the ceiling of his wardrobe. It was his secret passage, allowed him to crawl up into the attic on no notice. He kept all his books there, safe from prying eyes. The attic became his secret place. He even constructed a makeshift altar and decorated it with sarcastic symbols, upside down crosses and crude drawings of the devil. One night he broke into the local church and stole a silver chalice and some communion water wafers. He brought them home and placed them on his altar. During the day, Luke was sleepy and lethargic, but at night he would come alive. When his, while his mother and father were asleep, he would creep around the house barefoot, trying not to make the slightest sound. Sometimes he would creep soundlessly into their bedroom and stand over them, watching their peaceful slumber. One day the teacher gave everyone in class an assignment. They had to write an essay entitled, Why I Grow Up? The teacher asked if anyone wanted to read their essay out loud. The class of Luca raised his hand. He stood in front of the blackboard, holding a crumpled piece of paper, and cleared his throat. When I grow up, he began, I want to be a vampire. The other kids rolled their eyes and giggled. Lokan was so excited, the paper was shaking in his hands. I want to sleep in a coffin, he continued. I want to surround myself with death. I want to dedicate myself to evil, get revenge on all my enemies. I will surrender my soul to Satan, accept him as my Lord and Saviour. That's enough, Lokan, the teacher interrupted. Lokan ignored her, and his voice grew louder. None of his classmates were giggling now. I want to drink the blood of little boys and girls, feel it coursing through my veins. I want to sink my teeth into the soft flesh of my victims and feel their hot blood trickling down my throat. Stop it, Lucan, the teachers cried. Sit down. I want to rip them open. Pull apart their insides and feast on their entrails. I want to destroy every living being. I want to burn the world. I want to kill everyone who made fun of me. 
The teacher lunged at him, snatching the paper out of his hands, looked and clawed at her, and screamed like a mad thing as she grabbed him by the neck and marched him off to the principal office. office. He was yelling, I want to be a vampire. I want to kill you all. I want to kill you all. Laura Cam was suspended from school, and his parents had to meet with the teacher and the school principal. After that, everyone watched him like a hawk. Neighbors would pull their children off the street if they saw him coming. Rumors spread quickly about him, and nobody wanted anything to do with him. One day, a little boy who lived in the neighborhood went missing. His parents searched for him. There were no sign of him anywhere. Is this if he had vanished into thin air? The police were called and not every, on every door in the area, asking questions. One police officer questioned Lucan and noticed he was acting very nervous. A policeman had a bad feeling that a teenager he insisted on speaking to his mother and father. Lucan's parents met the policeman in, agreed to let him search the house. Lucan grew even more nervous. A police officer searched for Lucan's room, but didn't find anything suspicious. Then he opened a wardrobe and noticed a hole in the ceiling. He poked his head out through the hole, appeared in the attic. His eyes were greeted by horrifying sight. Later, he would say, it's the single most disturbing thing he had ever seen in his life. A dead boy, the missing bo boy, was hanging from the roof. His arms and legs were tied to the rafters of the attic in the shape of a, of a crucifix. Beneath him was a satanic altar, surrounded by books of devil worship. On the altar was a silver trellis filled with blood. The policeman scrambled downstairs and raised the alarm. He shouted for his colleagues. When he told them what he'd seen, they began to desperate search for Luke again. But teenagers was nowhere to be found. His parents had no idea where he was. A policeman on the street swore they hadn't seen anyone leave the house. Nobody could find any trace of the teenage boy. The police were baffled. They were sure there was no way the boy could have escaped without being noticed. It was a complete mystery. Later on, one of the officers did recall witnessing something strange. He said just after the commotion had started, he thought he saw someone fly out of the upstairs windows. It flapped it. In fact, its wings had disappeared in the night. He thought his eyes were playing tricks on him, but he could have sworn it was a large black bat. This story was actually inspired by a real-life murder that happened in Ireland in 19, 1993. A young boy named John Hogan went missing. When the police investigated, they began to suspect a teenage boy who lived next door. They searched his house in his attic. He discovered a dead body of a young boy, I mean, tied to the rafters of the attic, with a crucifix in pose. Underneath him is an altar, a silver chalice, and satanic books. Of course, in real life, the teenager boy didn't turn into a vampire bat and escape. He's rested and sent to jail for his terrible crime. <laughs>